Kellick, you with your passive perception begin to hear just like a slight rattling of metal. And it it's almost like uh, something's vibrating two pieces of metal together. And you sort of look around and you look back to the, the little tin that you put those crystals in that you took out of March. Oh, no. And you can see one of them, uh, t- two of them look just about like they did uh, with a dull white glow. Um, one of them, however, is beginning to vibrate and beginning to glow a little bit brighter and brighter. And as it is, you notice that this one is cracked, unlike the other two. This one has a a slight crack running through it. And it begins to glow brighter and brighter and brighter, and then it shatters within the tray. And from the tray, uh, a wisp of white smoke comes up from where the crystal was. And it wisps around the room. And at this point, everyone begins to notice this, this ghostly wisp flying around the room, almost searching. And it makes its way over to one of the dead bodies that's on the tables. And it makes its way over, and it hovers above a smaller human who is deceased. And it moves over to the next one, and it moves to uh, a pretty well-built elf. And then it moves over to the next one to a massive half-orc that is laying dead on the table. And then it rushes towards his face, fills his nostrils and his mouth as the half-orc <gasps> springs back to life. You can see a hole in his chest where the, the wound was that he died, about half a foot across, six inches, a hole straight through his chest as he bursts back to life. And he sits up on the table, grabbing everyone's attention. And he looks down at his hands and he looks back and forth as he opens his hands and closes his hands, getting re-familiarized with the muscles and how they work. And he looks over to all of you. And he looks confused. And he looks over each one of you guys. And he opens his mouth to speak. But the voice that comes out is not that of a massive half work. It's that of a woman. And the voice emanates as they're looking down at their hands and goes, oh, this is interesting. Oh, this is very interesting. Wow, this is new. Where am I? As she looks to the group. Uh, I sort of look around like, anybody want to take this? <laughs> What sort of mismatched creature is this? Was... Hold was on. that body unconscious? Like, it did it just wake up? Maybe? Uh, what manner of spirit are you? I just point to the hole and almost says that in his chest. <laughs> I, don't, and I don't know. She looks down at her chest now, and she sees the, the massive hole that has begun to rot from the death that has occurred. And she goes, oh, well, wasn't expecting that. It's not ideal, but, you know, you work with what you get. Now I'll ask again, where am I? You're in Coldcrest, in Ondale. Ondale. Why did you come here? Well, okay. what, what manner of creature are you? Ondale, I can make that work. What are you? Well, I'm obviously not what I once was, but... I don't think, uh, don't think I can stay like this. I, uh, I'm going to take my leave. Unfortunately, I can't have any of you knowing that, uh, this has transpired. Uh, so I will leave you with goodbye and, um, good luck. And she waves her hand as some magical energy emanates from the half-orc fingers. And a, a spark of yellow energy bursts the other three unconscious bodies back to life as well. As you hear and you can see the three unconscious bodies that were previously dead or unconscious limbs begin to pop back into place and wounds begin to slightly heal over but with a necrotic look to them and they gargle and wake up and hop off the tables and she looks to the rest of you and she says goodbye 
and good luck. And she hops off of the table and steps back through a dimension door that sucks her body away. Uh... I like to prep shillelagh. (laughs) (laughs) As you are just about to prep it, we are going to uh, begin initiative. So everyone roll initiative as you guys are staring down three zombies. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Uh... fine. 